So I know what you guys have been thinking. Destiny 2 dropped on uh, September 6, 2017, and you guys have been thinking, should I go out and get this game? It's $60. The first Destiny was super polarizing, you know. Some people said it didn't have a great story. Some people said it was just straight up trash. Yada, yada, yada. So you come to me for answers. Please, King Dub 7. I don't know what I should do. Please, tell me if I should get this game. Well, this video is for you guys. Should you get Destiny 2 for the PS4 or for the Xbox One? Well, that's not the, it's should you get Destiny 2. But, like, if you're going to get it, it's going to be on the PS4. You, you get the gist. That's what this video is about. Now, I will be 100% honest. I am kind of a big Destiny fan, so I may be a little biased in that aspect. But, at the same time, I came into Destiny 2 with a lot of reservations I came in kind of I don't know I didn't know if Destiny 2 was going to be as good as it should be I didn't think if you go back on my channels I didn't think or my videos I didn't think that Destiny 2 should have gotten a sequel or Destiny should have gotten a sequel I thought everything should have just been an expansion and patches and things like that so that's where my head was before I played Destiny 2. Let me tell you where my head is after playing Destiny 2. So first, let's talk about that story that people were so upset about. In my opinion, the Destiny 2 story was actually pretty good. It didn't like it wasn't the best story I've ever seen in any video game, but it kind of went back to how Bungie used to do stories. It really reminded me of a Halo, like how Halo stories went. And it was much better than Destiny's one story. So let me tell you about what happened in Destiny 1, the story that I can remember and think of. So in Destiny 1, and I mean, this is kind of spoilers, but I doubt anybody's really gonna go back and play Destiny 1. But uh, in Destiny 1, you meet someone called the Stranger. The stranger tells you that the darkness is on the loose and you need to go and destroy the darkness so you go to a bunch of different planets and you kill stuff until you go to Venus or, or Mars I think it was, it was Mars and then you go to the Black Garden and then you fight the Black Heart who is supposed to be the like a god of the Vex and then you kill him for some reason and we don't necessarily know why any of that happened we don't know who the stranger was, we don't know why we, exactly why we went to Mars, but that's what happened, and yeah. And Destiny 2 though, I'm not going to give you a detailed description of what goes on in Destiny 2, but I'll just say this. The story has a beginning, it has a middle, and it has an end. We know who we're fighting, we know details about who we're fighting, we know the background about who we're fighting, we know why they're fighting them. Everyone has uh, everyone has personality. There are a bunch of cool cutscenes. I mean, the Destiny 2 story, like what they said, they actually put the story into the game this time rather than putting them in Grimoire cards and having us read those Grimoire cards. The story was so much improved, but it was improved on something that was pretty much nothing. There was pretty much no story in the game of Destiny 1 until the DLC started coming out and this story might be better than the Taken King and it, I don't know if it was better than it's up there with the uh, Iron Lord story or um, Rise of Iron DLC in Destiny 1 so the story was pretty good the voice acting was pretty good there is not much to complain about there, so I don't think that story will be an excuse to not get this game this year. Next, let's talk about gameplay. So, Destiny has always had very strong gameplay. It's already, it's always run super smooth. Even though a lot of people give it a lot of flat because it only runs at 30 frames per second, Destiny has been one of the smoothest 30 frames per second. Like, if you play it, it feels very close to 60 it doesn't 
feel like 60, but it feels as close to 60 without it being 60, then it feels more like that than any game I've ever played. So, the gameplay is very fun. There is so much to do in the game. First of all, the story missions in the game. Have you played Destiny 1? The story missions in Destiny 2 feel like strikes in Destiny 1. The strikes in Destiny 2 feel like strikes in Destiny 1 also. So, it's kind of weird in that sense because strikes and story missions feel pretty si similar. Actually, the story missions feel longer than strikes in that sense, but not really. It's hard to explain, but there is a lot to do in the game. This cannot be a full like impression because there is a lot that I haven't gotten a chance to play yet because Raid hasn't come out and I haven't touched as much Crucible as I did in Destiny 1 at this point. So I can't talk about raids and I can't talk about Crucible. But what I can tell you is that exploring the world and just walking around the world, there's so much to do in the world. There are missions, there are adventures, there are still patrols, there are there's loot everywhere, there are chests everywhere. There's just so much to do in the world. Um, if that's not for you, if PvE isn't for wait, first of all, well first let's talk about events because in my opinion the events in Destiny 2 blow the events in Destiny 1 out of the water. There are, uh, I don't know if there are more, but the events are more fun. And the enemies that come out, that will uh, spontaneously appear in the world, the enemies are a lot harder. Like there are all, there are just bosses all around the world in Destiny. Um, and if you're not into PVE, the Crucible is always still fun to do. The Crucible plays a little bit differently because it's not uh, six versus six anymore. It's four versus four, like the Halo series was. And in that sense, it's more reliant on group play. You see a bunch of people roaming around in groups rather than a, a lot of one versus one gunfights. But my favorite addition to uh, to the gameplay and to Crucible and PVE is the fact that there are a bunch more movement options in the game. There are a plethora of movement options. You have dodges, you have air dodges for warlocks. I'm not sure what titans have because I don't really play titans, so I can't talk too much about them. But warlocks have air dodges, they have a, a bunch of unique abilities that you can use. But in a sense, the amount of abilities and customization in each subclass has kind of dipped down in a sense because instead of having four rows of abilities to choose from, you kind of have two sets of abilities to choose from. And then you have three different grenades, three different jumps, and two different, like, uh, two different class abilities so by class abilities I mean warlocks have they have something they have a second half of the old titan bubble so titan bubbles used to have blessing of light uh, blessings of light and healing of light which gave you attack damage and healed you so now instead of having blessing of light and healing of light titans just have a bubble and then they can change their super from being ultra defensive to ultra offensive. Now, uh, well, I can now have that blessing of light and healing of light and their class ability. Um, hunters have two different types of roles. And again, I, I am not 100% sure what Titans have because I don't play with a Titan. I don't like Titans, so I don't know what Titans have. That's that. Graphically and sound, I'll cover this in the, these two topics both in this one segment. So let's talk about sound first. Destiny 1 soundtrack, I feel like was super underrated. People didn't talk about it enough, I feel, and I feel it was really strong. The Destiny 2 soundtrack, although Marty O'Donnell is not there anymore, who used to be the lead composer for Bungie and composed uh, I feel I think he composed all the Halo and composed up to uh, the first half of Destiny, and then he left. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I 
I was super afraid that the soundtrack would kind of drop off a little bit, but it doesn't seem to have dropped off at all. The soundtrack in Destiny 2 is really good. The songs do a good job of captivating that hype feeling and that the stressful feelings that you get when you fight each boss. Also, another thing with sound, I really enjoy all of the gun sounds in Destiny 2. I feel like gun sounds are also a underrated game or underrated thing in first person shooters or in games period. I really enjoy all of the gun sounds, all of the like enemy sounds, things like that. The sound of Destiny is just awesome. Graphically, um, I feel like the game is just a more polished looking version of Destiny 1 on PS4 and Xbox One. That's where I come off. It just looks more polished, but it doesn't look that much better, but it still looks really, really good. That's pretty much all there is to... Wait, 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 wait. Longevity. So... The game is gonna last you a long time. I've already put maybe 40 or 50 hours into the game so far, and I'm nowhere near max light level. I'm not even like light level 300 yet. I think light max light level is 350. I'm nowhere near that. I'm like 252. But and I'm I haven't even played a lot of the things that. I could, I would be able to play, well, I've played everything for the most part except Raids because Raids have not been released yet, Raids will be released tomorrow, but I've played a good amount of, i played everything that there is to be played, but I haven't put a good amount of time in everything that there is to be played. And I am still having fun, everything still feels fresh. Maybe it's just because I love the grinding aspects of certain games like this. Like, I love grinding in Destiny, but there's just so much to do in this game. I'm enjoying every single bit and piece of the game. Oh, no, yeah. I feel like this game has more longevity than the, than the Vanilla Destiny 1. Vanilla Destiny 2 will, pat, will last longer than Vanilla Destiny 1, in my opinion. And there are DLC that will come out, expansion packs that will come out for Destiny 2 that will make the game last even longer. So if you don't want to buy the DLC, I think that this will last you maybe, I think that you could play Destiny, a casual person could play Destiny 2, the vanilla based version of the game, for maybe 50 hours and have fun with it for all 50 hours. A hardcore fan of Destiny 2 could play the game for maybe the vanilla Destiny 2 for maybe about 300 to 400 hours. I'm not exaggerating at all. I feel like that's how much. If you played everything, like if you played Crucible, all the story missions, you just grind it out till you just wanted to grind out as hard as possible. I think you could put about 200 to 300 to 400 hours into the vanilla Destiny 2. And I'm also including when the raid comes out because it's going to take people around to a while to do a raid. It's going to take people a while to get all the gear in the raid. And also hardcore fans are going to want to build a one of each uh, character most likely. Unless you're like me and you don't like a specific class. A hardcore fan is going to want to build one of each uh, class. So that's going to that's gonna be at least 300 hours. 100 hours each character maybe a little bit more so maybe around 400 hours and then also um the dlc so that's going to be even more hours i feel like destiny is going to have a huge amount of longevity the game is just going to last a long time I don't do ratings, but I'm really enjoying Destiny. I feel like if you do not have this game, if you're on the fence about getting this game, I definitely feel like you should go out and buy this game. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate all of that. This is King Dove the Seventh signing off. Peace.